Are we there? Help somebody to find that. Just a story, not a fantastic deep thing today, but a story that we will go home with and never forget. Just like the little two I've told you already. If you know anybody that has ulcer, find out that person is always quarreling. Always quarreling and grumbling like a dog, nyang, 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 all over the place. It causes ulcer. That's why you have it. And you can drink all the chalk that the doctor gives you, it will heal. The only thing that will heal it is start being a happy person. Learn to forgive. That's the story I told you. It's a little statement with a deep revelation. And the second one is the goat milk is the best milk outside a human milk. Goat. Of all animals, goat. They just found out. See? And the Bible has something to say about that too. Did you know that? The science is just found out recently, but the Bible has said it a long time. But because goat is what it is, nobody cares about him. But it carries something that no other animal has. So that sometimes you see a person you think is absolutely worthless and useless. No, you're wrong. You've never taken time to search. See? So let's give one another a second chance. Second Chronicles chapter 30. Let me not forget to welcome those who are new among us, please. If there are, I know there will be a couple of people who have not seen my face before. Uh, maybe you've been here in my absence or today is your first time to be here. Would you please raise up your hand? Alex, okay, brother, God bless you. Thank you. My, please raise your hands up. Look at that. I know you all have your Bibles. You can't clap your hands. But let's say, praise the Lord. Praise Rather than diminish, you increase. Also, I want to welcome those that run away. Even though God told us that there will be no war. I thought you believed the word of God. You ran for your life. Now you're back. So welcome. <laughs> God bless you for that. I, I said I was going to see the little babies that were dedicated. I haven't forgotten. I'll still do that. But let's go to the word now. Second Chronicles chapter 30, verse 1. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. For the king had taken counsel and uh, his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month, for they could not keep it at that time because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently. Neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem. And the thing pleased the king and all the congregation. Chapter 29. Verse 1 and 2, or verse 1, 2 and 3. Hezekiah began to reign when he was 5 and 20 years old. And he reigned 9 and 20 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Ab Abijah, and the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. According to all that David, his father, had done, he, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. And he brought in the in he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them together into the east street and said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord. God of your fathers and carry forth the, the filthiness out of the holy place. May the Lord add his blessing to the region of his word. You may be seated. Here's a Kyle. I'm just going to share with you a story. I want to play myself back into this church. This church is more mature than many churches. I want you to know that. You know how I measure that? I preached some messages here. 
I go to America, I go to Canada, I preach the same message just to see the reaction. And oh my, look at the altar full of people weeping and crying. They never heard that. A pastor told me in America, he said, brother, people preach thunders, others preach uh, different things, but I have never heard any man preach like this. I said, you heard it today. He's a minister, an elderly man. So you see, the Lord is blessing us. We must not forget. Let's fall in love with him. Like Hezekiah did. A young man, a king. A young man, 25 years old. He began to reign. And the moment he grabbed power into his hands, the first thing he did was open the doors of the house of God. In other words, that door was closed. Is that correct? Somebody closed the door of the house of God. How can you close the door of the house of God and expect God to bless the people? Now, the Bible says it did that which was right in the sight of God. That's the greatest testimony any man will want to have. Not to have a lot of money, not to have a lot of land and buildings and, and qualifications. Those things are good, but they begin and end on earth. But the Bible says this man, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Praise God! Hallelujah. Five and twenty years old, he began to reign. The Bible said he went the way of David his father. But I want to show you something. In chapters, uh, before we get back to what we read, look at chapters 28. The first verse of chapters 28, verse 1, Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. But he did that which was, that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father, all right? And then we go to chapter 26, verse 1. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the room of his father Amaziah. Is that right? Right? We'll go a little further. I'd like to show you uh, uh, Second Chronicles chapters uh, uh, 29 and then 28. I want to read a few things there. Chapters 28. Are we there? Alright, look at verse 2. For he walked in the ways of the kings. Uh, for he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten images for Balaam. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the hidden whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Is that right? Okay, let's go down to verse, uh, to verse, uh, I think it's 19. Look at verse 19. For the Lord brought Judah, are you in verse 19? For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel, for he made Judah naked and transgressed sore against the Lord. And verse 22. And in the time of his distress did he trespass yet more against the Lord. That is that king Ahaz. For he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus which smote him and he said, because the gods of the kings of Syria help them, therefore will I sacrifice to them, that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him, and of all Israel. And Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God, and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God, and shut up the doors of the house of the Lord. And he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. And in every several city of Judah, he made high places to burn incense unto other gods and provoke to anger the Lord God of Israel. 
Now the rest of the acts and of all his ways, first and last, behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And Ahab slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city, even in Jerusalem. But they brought him not into the sepulchres of the kings of Israel. And Hezekiah, his son, reigned in his stead. Amen. Now we see uh, an ungodly father, but a godly son. Amen. An ungodly father, a godly son. Now this ungodly father, uh, Ahaz, he began to rule when he was 20 years old. And he pretended to be serving God and walking in the ways of David. And all of a sudden he turned away from God completely. And he began to make images to worship. What a beautiful picture today of young men who in their youth find God. Young women in their youth find God and begin to worship God. And all of a sudden they turn away and create images that they worship. Some of them turn to fashion. Some of them turn to worldliness. Some of them turn to whatever they can lay their hands upon. No matter what the word of God says about it. That means nothing to them. 20 years old, he was a king. And as a king, he can make his laws. So he decided to close the house of God. Now because he turned away from God, God turned away from him. And the Bible said the same thing. If you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. You walk away from him, he walks away from you. And this man walked away from God, and God walked away from him. And his enemies conquered him. The Syrians came upon him and conquered him. You know what he did? In his hour of distress, in his hour of tribulation and trouble, rather than seek the God of David, he said, well, I was conquered by the Syrians. So the God of the Syrians helped them. Now what I'm going to do is get some of my children and kill them and sacrifice them to the God of Syria who conquered me. So that the God of Syria will help me. What a foolish man he was. How can you, a son of God who knows, the power of God, what God can do. And the word of God says his anger is for a season. His chastisement is for our good. How can any man that ever tasted the goodness of God? Because he was pushed back a little bit by his enemy. He says, well, the God of my enemies is stronger than my own. And then he went and forgot the God of Israel. He began by worshipping the God of David. But he turned away. And he said, well, if these people conquered me, then that means their God is stronger. And so he left his son God. In his hour of distress, he sinned more. Is God pointed to anybody this morning? Who because your friend got a promotion in the place of work and you think the idol, the gods, the devils that worship is stronger than your God? Because somebody's business prospered and he made some little more money. Change his carpets and furniture. Change his dresses and shoes. Then you think the God, the devil he offered sacrifices to, the gods of the sea and the devils of the air are stronger than the God you worship. And you think, well, I'll go to church, all right? But I'll go from the back door and see if the God of my competitor can help me too. The Bible says you are transgressing more in your hour of distress. Think about it. There are so many today in their hour of distress. That's where they transgress more. The 
I read the book of Job, but I believe the God of Job is dead. God never changed. He's the same yesterday, today, forever. What is done for one man, he can do for another man. God made this boy a king, 20 years old. And he was so stupid. Now he thought, he, he never even considered that he was guilty. Of, you see here, uh, Hezekiah, he got at the priests and sanctified them. And said, sanctify yourselves. Then gather together, go into the house of God, open the doors. Take away all the polluted things, get them out of the house of God. What were the polluted things? He made molten images and brought them into the house of God. Rather than worship the God of heaven, he said, worship the God of Syria. Because Syria conquered him. So he said, well, the God of Syria is stronger. Let me try. Maybe he will help me. Hey, brother, you may have prayed for this and prayed for that. And you are waiting for God's answer. Meanwhile, you are trying the God of Syria. The Bible says you transgress more in your day of distress. Play tricks. Tricks can help you. You're a child of God. Amen. You can't succeed by tricks. Others can play and get away, but you will be caught. You know why? The devil is standing by your right hand to accuse you. I can show you that in the Bible. But the devil stands right there to accuse you. Others can get away with it, but you can't. It's going to backfire. Because your way of success can only come from the God you worship. Amen. Doesn't come from the north or south. Doesn't come by labor, nor by power or might. It's got to be by the Spirit of God. Amen. You want a job? God will give you one. Amen. If you're sick, God is going to make you well. You want a wife? Wait for God's time. You pray for a child? God will give you a proper one. Don't you try the gods of Syria. They're not going to help you. Never do. Where is Syria today? They can't even come close to Israel. They'll wipe them up in a minute. Now, it's, it's, it's very unfortunate. But what I'm trying to say, this young uh, Hezekiah, when his father died, he took over and he had David for his great, great, great grandfather. But uh, Ahaz was his immediate father. He was alive and saw how his father worshipped idols. He saw it. But he never said, well, it's not my fault. My father had me when he was an idol worshiper, so I worship idol all my life. I hear many people say, my father is a Roman Catholic. I will die a Roman Catholic. You're dead already. You have your own life to live. You have your own judgment to stand. You have your own decisions to make. You have your own sins to confess. You don't say my father was. Your father was whatever he was, but you have your own decision to make. His father closed the door of the house of God and the boy said, open it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open it. Amen. Economic hardship may close. The situation in our country may close. Doors. And double your zeal for the house of God. But this morning I want you to know you will do better if you open it up. Yeah. Take away all the unholy things. Where is the house of God? Stand up, brother. You said the right thing. I saw you do like this. That was the house of God. Yeah. It's not this one. In those days, Solomon built a house. But today, God don't live in a house built with hands. He lives in you. Yeah. For you are the temple of the living God. Then open that door. 
You know what? Sometimes a brother offends a brother. And that brother closes the door of the house of God. Nothing good goes in, nothing good comes out. Just because someone offended him. Hezekiah never let that do him. He said, open that door. Yeah. Brother, this morning, open that door. Yeah. You may say, well, the door is open, but there are some people who can pass through your door. There are some brothers who can pass through your door. There are some sisters who can pass through your door. Will you open that door this morning and take away that abomination that is making them not to pass through that door? In the house of God, there are many blessings. That blessing must go around. It must go around. God blesses the wicked man. God blesses the good man. Do you know that? God's rain falls on the good and the bad. If you are born of that spirit, you do the works of your father. So open that door this morning. Now I want you to see how Hezekiah won the heart of God. Until when he fell sick and was going to die. And when God came and said, hey, Isaiah, God tell him he's going to die. And that man thought for a while and said, well, that's all right. And he turned to the wall and he said, Lord, uh, when I was healthy, when I was strong, I worship you. Remember, I did that which was right in your eyes. What is that which was right in the eyes of the Lord? Then it was to open the house of God and sanctify the priests and sanctify the Levites and sanctify the vessels of the house of God and restore true worship. God loved it. His father made God's people worship devils and idols and images. But his son turned the people around and brought them back to Jehovah God. That was pleasing in the eyes of God. When he was sick and God said, you're going to die, he said, Lord, remember, I did that which was right in your eyes. And God said, that's true. Yeah. You are healed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Is there anything God can remember this morning and grant your petition? Anything? Something good you did for the glory of God. Not for your selfish gain. Don't do good because of what you get. That's not good. That's business. That's business. You do anything for anybody because you're going to get something back. That is business. But when you do good and you're not even expecting nothing in return, that is good. Yeah. You have done good. And good is God. Yeah. Playing himself out in you. Living out his life in you. Am I too noisy? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. All right. I'm home. <laughs> I feel good. I feel free. Amen. Now look at what this young man did. Remember 25. So you have no excuse. 25. He was 25 years old. And all his mind was the house of God. You can check the scriptures. When he was healed, the first thing he did was go back to the house of God. That's where he went. The first place he went was the house of God. Check it when you go home. Isaiah said, this will be the sign. You will go back to the house of God. His mind was always in the things of God. There are so many that are doing business and thinking they're doing good. Brother, please give me five now. I'll give you back next tomorrow. I always tell you. If you can't overlook that five naira, don't give it. Just don't give it. So your good won't turn to bad. But if you can overlook it, then go ahead and give it. Because that brother may give it back to you or he may not. Many of them want to give it back, but circumstances won't allow it. They try and try. The more they try, the worse they get. 
and they want to explain it to you. You don't want to listen. You want the five naira. Where is the five naira? That is business. That is chop a chop. See, that's not doing good. See, doing good is the Bible says put your bread on many waters. Listen, if you take bread, a loaf of bread, how much is a loaf of bread now? The smallest one. <laughs> six naira. Okay, you buy bread six naira and throw it inside the messy water. What are you expecting from that water? Are you expecting anything? No. The Bible says throw your bread on many waters. Spiritually, waters mean people. Just your bread is your food. Your money, your, your, your whatever. Give it. Give. Give to whosoever asks. Give. If you can. If you cannot, explain to him. Or if you can't give five, give two. Okay? So that if he doesn't bring it back, fine. It won't hurt you so much. But you see, if he says, but I give me five naira, I'll give it back to you tomorrow, the devil had it. The prophet says, if you don't want the devil to hear it, don't say nothing. But you spoke it. And the devil knows you love this brother. The devil knows the brother is sincere. And he needs help. And he has come to you because you are his brother. You should be your brother's keeper. And here you want to help your brother, and you help your brother, and the next day you see him, brother, what about my money? Oh, uh, uh, brother, uh, you say, you see, it's people like you that cause trouble in the church. And then the brother is so ashamed to come to church the next day. You run him out of the house of God. Run him out of your own house. Run him out of your heart. You have not put your bread on many waters. You haven't. You've done business. That's all. God help us. This young man, he was interested in the things of God. He was interested in restoring true worship. At the time, he was, listen, his father lost true worship and got in trouble. He ran for 16 years and died. See? But he restored true worship. And he was about to die. God restored his life. His father died away, but God restored his life. Why? He restored true worship. True worship brings life. No wonder why the Bible says, uh, those are winner souls are wise. Hezekiah won the whole nation for God. The whole nation. And when he was in trouble himself, he reminded God, whatever good you're doing for the name of the Lord is not in vain. Don't worry, you may not get it now. But there will come a day when you will say, Lord, remember. And he will remember. Let me do this quickly and then we shall go home. Alright, if your Bible is still open. And uh, I'm reading from verse, uh, from verse 5. So they established a decree to make proclamation throughout all Israel. For Bathsheba... From Bathsheba even to Dan, that they should come to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel at Jerusalem, for they had not done it of a long time in such sort as it was written. So the post went with the letters from the king and the princes through, through to the throughout all Israel and Judah, and according to the commandment of the king, saying, Ye children of Israel. Turn again unto the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. Don't you like that? Turn again. Go to a new denomination. Turn right back to the original. Right? And he will return to the remnant of you that I escaped out of the hand of the kings of Assyria. And be not ye like your fathers and like your brethren which trespassed against the Lord God of their fathers who therefore gave them up to desolation as ye see. Now be ye not stiff-necked as your fathers were but yield yourselves unto the Lord and enter into his sanctuary which he hath sanctified forever and serve the Lord your God. 
that the fierceness of his wrath may turn away from you. For if you turn again unto the Lord, your brethren and your children shall find compassion before them that lead them captive, so that they shall come again unto this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return unto him. So the posts passed from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh, even unto Zebulun, but they laughed them to scorn and mocked them. Nevertheless, divers of Asher and Manasseh and of Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. Also in Judah, the hand of God was to give them one heart to do the commandment of the king and of the princes by the word of the Lord. Amen. Glory be to our God. Did you follow the reading? Here was God moving a man, a king, to turn the nation back to God again. Look at what Hezekiah said. He said, if you turn to God, he will turn back to you. And if you turn to God, your brothers and sisters who are carried away into captivity, God will bring them back again. So you see that our sincerity, our faithfulness to God can affect our relations. It can affect your brother. It can affect your sister. If you are faithful to God, you can ask God to heal your mother. You can ask God to save your brother. He can touch you wherever he is. Do you catch what I'm saying? And the king says, turn to God again. And the post people went from city to city, telling them the message of the king. And the Bible says, the people of Asher and Zebulun laughed. They laughed them to scorn. You know what that means? You know what that means? To laugh to scorn. Brother, you know what that means? You just came back. Good. I mean to laugh to scorn. To laugh at somebody until he's ashamed of himself. You know? Laugh and laugh until tears come out of your eyes. You know, some people laugh until they fall down on the ground. Until they look for something to support them. Just they're intoxicated with laughter. People do that to the word of God. The word of God. They laugh at the word of God to scorn. Why? They are already used to worshipping idols, worshipping images, worshipping uh, by the wisdom of men. They never heard the word of God before. The word of God always turned the heart back to God again. But you know the heart is always deceitful. The heart always loves the wrong thing. See, they are used to worshiping images. Like today, people go to church and recite here, Holy Mary, full of grace and all that. And carve Peter and, and carve uh, Stephen and carve uh, Paul, carve all kinds of carved images. Every Christmas, they carve, uh, once again, people love that so much. And then you tell them, look, Jesus is not like that. They laugh you and just laugh you, laugh you to scorn. And some are baptized when they were little babies. There are some of you sitting here this morning. You were baptized when you were a very little child. See? And you, if you are told that you are to be baptized the second time, you just laugh and go away. See? And you, sisters, you look around, you are told that your hair should be your glory. You think it's her tie. Her tie is fine. But that's not what it should be. Your hair should be the covering of your head. Amen. Glory be to God. They love them to scorn. But in that hour that they loved and loved and loved them to scorn, the Bible said some people among the lasters humbled themselves. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want to be a part of that. I want to humble myself. I want to be humbled. I want to humble myself. Be a child of God. Fear and tremble at the word of God. 
Something very interesting here. Somebody will go in the rapture. It will not be somebody who is sinless. It will not be somebody who has never done anything wrong. It will not be somebody who dropped down from heaven. It will be somebody who humbled himself. Somebody like these people. That went astray. And the word of God came by the hand of a post. And said the king says come back. And they humble themselves and come back. That's the ones that go in the rapture. But the ones that laugh until tears come down their eyes. That's the ones that won't even know when the rapture takes place. We are going to take events made clear by prophecy. Pretty soon. And show you what's going on in the world now. 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 Israel is God's timepiece. See, some of you will be so shocked to know what hour we're living in. But well, let's just humble ourselves now and read through this and we close. And verse 13. And they assembled at Jerusalem much people to keep the feast of unliving bread. In the second month, a very great congregation. And they arose and took away the altars that were in Jerusalem. And all the altars for incense took they away and cast them into the brook Kidron. Then they killed the Passover. On the 14th day of the second month, and the priests and the Levites were ashamed and sanctified themselves and brought in the burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. And, the, and they stood in their place after their manner, according to the law of Moses, the man of God. The priests sprinkled the blood which they received of the hand of the Levites. Can you say amen? Amen. Yeah. Wonderful. Now they have not worshipped God the way Moses commanded them for a long time, the Bible said. It's the same thing today. People go to church, worship God, but not God's way. See? The Bible said they are religious, but they deny the power thereof. Is that correct? And other people teach for commandments uh, the doctrines of men. They go to church, but not worship God's way. See? And so these people here, for a long time, there was idols in the church, temples of Dagon, temples of Baal, temples of Shongo, temples of Amadioha, right inside the house of God. And they worship together like that. See? And they were going on. But here was a man that first of all dedicated himself. Hezekiah, 25 years, dedicated his life to restore true worship. He didn't care about what his father did. The first thing they did, he got all his priests and Levites and sanctified them. Then he told them, clean up the house of God. And they went into the house of God, took away all the man-made altars. Man-made altars. What does an altar represent? An altar represents a meeting point, a meeting place. Did you know that? That's where they offer sacrifices. That's where God and man meet. Huh? Yeah, your body is the house of God, but your heart is the altar. See? And here is where the devil and the false priests meet. Take it away! That's not a true altar. Take it away! And they tie the whole thing out. And the Bible says the priests and the Levites became ashamed of themselves. What made them ashamed? They had misled the people. Because of their belly. Because of popularity. Because of whatever. They had led the people of God astray. Priests. Priests. They took this young man, 25 year old king, to have the courage and boldness to say, throw away these things. And they cast them out. And then the priests came in ashamed. Hey, brother, if in your heart there is something to be thrown out this morning, do it now. And be ashamed of allowing such a thing in your heart to begin with. Open up the door of the house of God. You are the temple of God. The devil closed that door. Open it. Let love and joy and peace and 
brotherly kindness and mercy and, and long suffering and patience and let Jesus be seen. Take away all the false altars of hypocrisy. Take them out from your heart. And the priests were ashamed. And then they came back and stood in their proper place. In other words, they were not in their proper place before. And that's why idols came into the hearts of God. When the wrong people are in the right places, then wrong things happen. See? He says, take it away, and they were cast it out. And they came back, and they humbled themselves. They didn't break the church and went away. They came back ashamed, but yet humble. That is the Spirit of God. I like that. All right? Let's read this last page before we close. Is that verse 18? 17. For they uh, were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Therefore, the Levites had the charge of the killing of the Passovers for everyone that was not clean to sanctify them unto the Lord. Is that right? There are some people who are not sanctified. So they cannot kill their own Passover lamb. You know what that means? Some people who are not sanctified, they cannot kill their own lamb. They have laughed at the message. It's the word of God that sanctifies you. You know that? You believe the word of God, you're saved. You reject the word of God, you're condemned. So if they are condemned, the, the prayer of a sinner, the Bible says, is an abomination before God. Even his offering is an abomination. But you see, the brothers had to take charge of killing for those who were not sanctified. They didn't just reject them. When true worship comes, true love comes. They did not reject them. They killed their Passover lamb for them. Because they could not kill it. They were not sanctified. They had to do it for them to sanctify them. And that's what the Bible says. Pray one for another. That you may be healed or forgiven or saved. Having prayer of a righteous man availed much. Is that right? Glory be to God. You can sanctify one another. That's why the Bible says the believing husband sanctifies the unbelieving wife. The unbelieving wife sanctifies the believing husband. Look at that. The unbeliever is not sanctified. If you are not a believer, you are not sanctified, brother. If you are not a believer, sister, you are unsanctified. But we will hold pray for you and pray for you. And God will be merciful to your heart and open it up. For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim and Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun had not placed themselves, yet did they eat the Passover otherwise than it was written. But Hezekiah came from them. Everyone. Can we give the Lord a clap offering, everybody? Wonderful. That's wonderful. Look at the heart of that man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Don't you love Hezekiah? See, when he was dying, he said, Oh God, remember, I did that which was right to your side. What is that? This is part of it. Some people were, they had sinned, and they had not confessed their sin. They were not sanctified. They were not believing. But yet, they ate the Passover. See? Come to church, dance around, but don't believe the word of God. I'm not saying if you can make the, if you can heal the sick I'm not saying if you can raise the dead but do you believe God can do it that's the important thing I don't mean if you can do it do you believe God can do it do you believe Jesus died for your sin See, I'm not saying uh, are you a sinner I know you are but do you believe Jesus died for the sins of you and I that's, that's what is important See, look at this king his mind was not one to be lost. Not one. See? So many were not sanctified. Like today they won't get baptized. You, well, there's a water, water over there ready for anybody who wants to be baptized. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sin. See? He says, may the good Lord pardon everyone. Although he knew that they had taken it otherwise. The way it was written. Didn't Paul say, those that take 
uh, the bread and the wine uh, unworthily, they do what? They take condemnation. And then we like to say, say it. Hey, if you take it unworthily, if you take it unworthily, uh, condemnation, condemnation. We want to say that. Terrorize and terrify everybody. But Hezekiah waited and watched. When it was all over, he stood up and said, Lord, there is some here who have taken it wrongly. Pardon everyone. And this morning I want to say, I know in my absence, by word, by thought, or by deed, some of you have done something wrong and sinned against God or one another. May the good Lord pardon you all. Amen. You believe that? Glory be to his name. Verse 19. That prepared his heart to seek God. Verse 19. Pardon everyone that prepared his heart to seek God, the Lord God of his Father, though he be not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary. And the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people. And the children of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the feast of our living bread seven days with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with loud instruments unto the Lord. And Hezekiah spake comfortably unto all the Levites that thought the, the good knowledge of the Lord. So we are teaching nonsense. But they thought the good knowledge of the Lord. And they did it throughout the feast seven days, offering, offering peace offerings and making confession to the Lord God of their fathers. And the whole assembly took counsel to keep other seven days. And they kept other seven days with gladness. For Hezekiah, king of Judah, did give to the congregation a thousand bullocks and seven thousand sheep. And the princes gave to the congregation a thousand bullocks and ten thousand sheep. And a great number of priests sanctified themselves. And all the congregation of Judah were the priests and the Levites. And all the congregation that came out of Israel. And the strangers that came out of the land of Israel and that dwelt in Judah rejoiced. So there was great joy in Jerusalem. For since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there was not the like in Jerusalem. Then the priests, the Levites, arose and blessed the people. And their voice was heard. And their prayer came up to his holy dwelling place, even unto heaven. Let's stand together. Hezekiah said, May the good Lord pardon everyone, though unclean, but has set his mind to please his God. If God will see a repentant heart in your heart today, may the good Lord pardon everyone. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, everyone. Just thank him that there is still mercy today. There is still mercy today. Don't you close the door of the house of God. Oh, I will never be good again to anybody. I will never help anybody again. I will never let anybody stay in my house again. I will never do this. I will never do that. Don't close the door, brother. Don't close the door, sister. You are the temple of God. Take away those idols. I may the good Lord pardon you. For even allowing such a thing in your heart, can God see a heart? A heart that is willing and humble, wanting to seek after the God of his fathers. Then receive pardon today. Yes, thank you, Jesus. I can see that heart tonight, this day. Oh, Lord, be merciful to your children. You are God that knows the heart, the thoughts, the intents, the intention, everything. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you be merciful to your children. And may we open the door of the house of God. May we open the door of the temple of God, which we are. Oh, merciful Father, let there be none today that we close the door because of one thing or the other. Now may we keep the door open today. Oh, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory be to your holy name. 
from everlasting to everlasting lord you are our god i will not help anybody again i will not allow anybody to this i will not do this and that you are closing the door brother don't do that because the day will come when you will remind god of the good you did and god will remember that you did that which is right in his eyes and he'll be merciful to you if you close the door you are going to close it against yourself because on that day when you call upon the lord there'll be nothing no evidence to show let us today open our hearts and just repent and humble ourselves in this day of mockery when people are mocking and laughing and making jests of the word of god there will be those that humble themselves and turn to god again even though you are not cleansed even though you are not cleansed oh may today be a day when god will see your heart a heart that sincerely want to seek God. Yes. And it's surely going to be according to His will for you today. Let us come with a humble heart and ask God to be merciful in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about it. His father said, well, the Syrians conquered me. So maybe their God is stronger than the God of Abraham. And then he went to worship the God idols and devils. Have you been deceived like that? Because you saw your friend. It appears things get a little better for him. Then you say, well, maybe his way is better than your own. And then you start thinking of how to join his crooked ways. Don't forget. The way of God is the only way. Hezekiah said, even though they are not clean, even though you are not clean, as a servant of God this morning, if God will see a heart that will be humble in the midst of laughter, when others are making mockery and making jest, when the postman arrived in Zebulon, they laughed him to scorn. But in the midst of that laughter, somebody feared God enough to humble himself and when the people finally came to the house of God and received mercy look at the joy the Bible said they had never had such a joy before except the time of Solomon and what brought that joy in the day of Solomon the people were in the house of God and the glory of God came down do you have joy in your heart do you have joy in your home if God is not there there can't be any joy Yes, brother. They can't be. Remember quarreling and fighting and fussing and arguing and bearing grudges and malice produce cancer and all sars and all kinds. Remember. Tell those who are not here. Tell your friends. Check anybody you know who has ulcer. He's somebody who always quarrels. Never have joy in his heart or her heart. It's always quarreling. If you can just drop that quarreling the thing will go by itself it will just go you'll be healed if you can believe the word of God this morning Heavenly Father we thank you we know you are in, the, in our midst this morning and Lord we thank you because your word is sure settled in heaven and we are praying dear God that you will forgive everyone who has sincerely turned to you today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and Lord, may you open every door that has been closed for one reason or the other. May we know as human beings, we're always offending one another. May we in love correct one another. May we never close that door. For we are that temple. We are that temple. Lord, help us not to close the door of compassion. But that we may love one another without dissimulation. Keeping a pure heart. 
knowing Lord that you will forgive us the way we forgive others let every family here Lord be blessed let every single people here be blessed let those who are new among us be blessed may we be filled with the joy of the Lord because we are believing today dear God that your word which we have received has cleansed us for the Bible says you sent your word and it healed them all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah glory be to our God amen whose report do you believe we will believe the report of the Lord whose report will you believe believe the report of the Lord his report says I am sing it sing it sing it says I am healed his report says I am free his report says victory you see Hezekiah told them if you come back to God God will bring your brothers in captivity back to this land will they believe that report and I said to you this morning if God will see in your heart a heart that is sincere and humble your sins will be forgiven you Amen. or if you stop grudging and grumbling and complaining and quarreling your sicknesses will go Amen. would you receive that report Amen. that's the song if the Bible says by the blood of Jesus Christ we are cleansed will you receive that report Amen. which report will you receive that's the song Let's stand together and worship the Lord before we go home. Whose report will you believe? Believe the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? His report says I am he. Oh, his report says I am healed. His report says I am free. His report says victory. Whose report do you believe? Believe the report of the Lord. Whose report do you believe? The report of the Lord. Oh, his report says I am saved. His report says I am healed. His report says I am free. Report says victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me try to sing this song and you join me in the chorus. Amen. Amen. Give me your hand. Let's agree together that all our enemies will crumble at our feet. What will bind on earth? He's born in heaven at the name of Jesus. Satan must flee. We got the power in the name of Jesus. We got the power in the name of the Lord. The Satan rages. We cannot be defeated, for we got the power in the name of the Lord. Oh, we've got the power in the name of Jesus. We got the power in the name of the Lord. We cannot be 
defeated for we got the power in the name of the everybody sing out to the Lord We got the power. Many years now, Satan tried to stop us. But the bride of Jesus, we are still alive. Like a mighty army, we are moving on, Lord, winning every battle for the lost on our side. We got the power in the name of Jesus. Oh, we got the power. We cannot be defeated. We got the power in the name of the Lord. Turn around and bless one another. Just say, God bless you. We got the power in the name of the Lord. We got the power in the name of Jesus. We got the power. God bless you. In the name of the Lord. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Satan rages. We cannot be defeated. God bless you. God bless you. The power. God bless you. Yes. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm We got the power <laughs> in the name of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless 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 you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, dear. God bless you. 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 God bless you, dear. Amen. 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 Oh, God bless you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Everybody else. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, my brother. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless my brother. Amen. Name of the Lord. We got the power. In the name of Jesus, we got the power. In the name of the Lord, we 